Nowadays, unfortunately, my young friends, people are so engrossed in these sports that they start to fight with each other. And we've seen that good brothers, you know, they'll come to the masjid, alhamdulillah, and then they'll be arguing over a football game of Manchester United versus Liverpool. Big deal, man. Yeah. What have they got to do with us? Subhanallah. Yeah? They're fighting over it. And what are they going to achieve? Nothing. They're going to achieve nothing. Fine. You, you support a team and that's fine. You support it to the level. But then what does it do? This sport becomes a fitna. When we're in Salah, Abdullah comes for Salah. The World Cup game is on or the European Championship or whatever. It's Maghrib time. No, 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 I'm not going to. I'm going to watch the game. Yeah? Come on, boys. Be honest. Yeah? Cricket. The World Cup. India versus Pakistan. Subhanallah. Yeah. What happened then? Everybody knows. Yeah? Huh. Yeah, man. So many people were glued on to that game and they left their religious duties. I can remember at one time in the World Cup, there was a game during Salatul Jumu'ah. There was a game, I think, during Salatul Juma in one of the World Cup games. I can't remember exactly which year, but there was a game in the World Cup during Juma time. You get people were asking, Sheikh, is there a late Juma somewhere? Yeah? He says, wait a minute, man. Why do you want to pray late Juma for? Sheikh, there must be provision somewhere. Yeah? Sheikh, can you lead me to late Juma? I was scratching my head. What's that for, man? Yeah? Why do you want to pray late Juma? Then I find out, oh, yeah, this was the secret behind it. Yeah? That they wanted to see the game. And leave the Jula, leave the Salatul Juma'a of the main congregation and do a separate Juma just for the sake of the match. Allahu Akbar. Yeah? Forget that, Abdullah. People then go one, 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 one step further. And what happens? In Salah, they're praying namaz, Allahu Akbar. They come to the masjid, Alhamdulillah. But now in namaz, the thoughts are with the match. What's going to happen? Rooney must be scoring now. Allah, make Rooney score. <laughs> Subhanallah. Yeah, yeah. This is the thought. Oh, come on, Allah, Allah please, you know, Allah, please. Uh, and I face my friends, Allah, you know. Subhanallah. Yeah? Now, these are the thoughts. Be honest, brothers, yeah. Some of them experience these things, yeah. Praying namaz and raising them, say, Allah, give me taqwa, yeah. Oh Allah, grant me your fear. Instead of that, oh Allah, give Rumi the golden boot, yeah. Ajeeb Allah, like I say, sports to a certain level, I accept it fine and well. I don't have any qualms about it. But then when it starts to affect our deen, our commitment to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and our commitment to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa that's when it's questionable. Unfortunately, like I say, I see many religious people, unfortunately, engrossed in these kind of debates and discussions. There's better things to talk about. You know, I see this. Sometimes the people in the masjid in the passages, Are deka kese chagga lagaya, are wa. You see how he hit that six man, yeah? Do you see how the did you see the that 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 free kick he took, man? Classic man, yeah, classic. Ajib, there is no harm in having a sport, you know, as a habit or hobby or whatever. But then when it starts to affect a person to this level, that's when I feel it's questionable. That's when I feel is that we should show where our commitment is. على مر الزمان تألقا وأضاء للدنيا طريقا مشرقا وهدى من الرحمن يهدينا به للصالحات وللمكارم والتقى